So first of all, we are going to carve the blade or the cutting edge of the axe. So it's pretty chunky at the moment. What we want to do is pretty much leave this side more or less flat. This is the side that's going to have the, the metal bottle opener and the two magnets. We're keeping this more or less flat because it needs to go up flush against the fridge. And that's what the magnets are for. They're going to stick it to the fridge. So it needs to be flat so it's more stable. So with that in mind, we can carve a lot of the other side. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is just mark um, what would be like the, the cutting edge on a real axe. Um, so, you know, just something like, what's that, about half a centimetre. We're going to leave that. All of this we will be carving away and then what we're going to do is we're going to from our line here we're going to taper it like this this is the top edge so we're going to remove all of that and this will give the appearance of, of like a, a real axe with a cutting edge uh, getting fatter here and tapering down So yes, it's all going to come away, all of this will come away here, like that, and then into here. And then the other thing we're going to do is we are going to just round over the back here. You don't have to do this, you can keep it square like in some axes, but I just quite like having a round bit here sort of following the drill hole and essentially that means we're going to be taking off these edges all that's going to come away like that so then for cutting direction um, the grain of the wood is running this way so that means we need to cut with the grain so it comes away nice and smooth so we need to cut in this direction like this going from the center of the axe towards the end um, for these little edge bits here yeah we could we could go sort of that way um, or we can go sort of down the green a little bit just gets on an edge it should be fine um let's see them on this side something like that right let's get carving okay so there's a few different types of cut you can do with this one is a big power cut like sharpening a stick so uh, create a little bit of space between your legs firm grasp and then you can just chop down like this and you can see it removes quite a bit of wood just work away at it and see it leaves a really nice smooth finish that's telling you you're going in the right direction um, if you find this cut just a bit too rough and you feel like you're not very controlled with this power cut, then another one, one of my favourites, is called a thumb push. It's much more detailed and all it is, thumb on the back of the blade and you push with the thumb. So, and it's sort of like, you can lever it as well, you can pivot. Removes less wood, but it's really nice and controlled. Okay, so sort of taking that profile down a bit now, so it's looking a lot more like an axe head already. Um, just a couple of points. Um, for the cutting edge, I normally try not to go too thin with that. It's tempting to go really, really sharp. 
um, like a real piece of metal but the problem with that is it will fray if you bash it around while it's opening your beer so I'll just take it down a little bit more than this um, but yeah don't go razor sharp um, so, but once you've got the profile like that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up this edge from the saw mark so I'm going to bring my grip in and again that thumb push and I'm just going to take away those rough edges left by the saw like this one nice and easy I can just feel it's digging in there a bit and this is a sign that the grain is dipping down into the wood so I need to come the other way so I could try going this way and trying holding on to it this way but I haven't got much to hold on to if I try and do that thumb push here and it'll probably just pull this out of my hand so what I'm going to do here is a safe way of cutting towards myself because I've got more wood to do that so I pin it into my chest like this knife point is pointing away from me arms are tucked in and then I'm just going to do this nice gentle slicing cut And that's coming away much more smoothly now than it was before you can see the shine on it and then what we can do is just start rounding this over that's if you want to thumb push Try not to go too thin where the axe handle will go because if you make this too thin when you try and fix the axe handle you could potentially break it so I'm just rounding it just enough. It's coming away nice and smooth, you should feel smooth, it's telling you you're cutting in the right direction. So there you go, so that is Yak's head done. You can see, hopefully you can see. So I've rounded over all these edges here, all around the axe. Every sharp edge, I've just taken it off, rounded it over to make it more durable. Now, you could leave it like this and you could just, um, get it oiled up later on perfectly fine but I personally prefer to take it to the next level and get the blowtorch on it so I'm just going to keep going until I don't see any brown at all just we want it nice and dark If you just charred this, the char would come off on your fingers when you're using it and it would be pretty messy. So what I'd recommend is a bit of kitchen roll or a cloth. Just giving it a bit of a rub like this and you'll see the, the char coming off like that. Um, makes it more durable and tidier and it gives like a really nice sort of shiny finish as well. So for the handle, um, this is for the Pro Kit, it's a curved handle which is harder to carve because of the curves. Uh, the wood is also a bit nicer, so a bit harder to carve but it'll look cooler, it'll darken up a bit better. This is beech in this case. Um, also in the Pro Kit, um, it's going to be sawn so we can put in a wedge as well, uh, like, a, like a proper axe. So for carving direction remember we're going to carve downhill always otherwise it will dig into the grain so if that's the top of the hill there for this section here we really need to be carving that way and then all of this down here we're going to go this way and um, we're just going to take off the edges round it over so it feels comfortable in the hand and if we turn it around 
top of the hill bottom. I'm going to go down that side like that when we're doing this edge. Top of the hill bottom like that. I'm just going to take off the edges, round it over. That's the handle pretty much done. I've taken off all the sharp edges. You can see the, the grain has popped out quite a bit nicely. It's a nice bit of beach. Um, if you're doing the standard axe carving kit, um, it's not so curvy, the handle. You can see the difference. It's straight, um, which means when you're carving it, it's a bit easier. So you can just carve right down the length either way. It doesn't matter, you can go that way with a knife or that way with a knife, all the way around, taking off the edges. Um, so that's why it makes that one a bit easier to carve. One little tip I quite like to do, so once you've done all your carving, you could sand this as well if you want it nice and smooth, if that's your thing. I quite like even the tool marks in it. Um, but one little tip to make it even nicer is to take hard, smooth thing like pestle um, or a bit of antler or a stone, and we can burnish it, which is essentially rubbing it until we compress the fibres and it leaves a really lovely, smooth, shiny finish. So we can just test it out before we do the wedge. Spin it nice and gently. Try not to go side to side because you might end up breaking the axe head. Just spin it into place. What we're wanting. is it to be poking out a little bit above the top of the axe like this. We're wanting the saw mark to be lined up. Okay, so for the wedge, there's a bit of hardwood here, darker in color so it contrasts with the handle. Um, and we're gonna just put a taper on it. So it needs to be really thin. So this is gonna be the end. I'm gonna remove all of this. Make it really thin so it goes into the top of the handle well. And we're going to have it tapering something like this. So it's going to be really thin. So it's a bit fiddly. This side's going to get removed and we can leave the other side. It's also been tapered slightly towards the edge just so there's less wood to try and get forced in to the top of the axe handle. So if you had a clamp you'd obviously just clamp the handle or the axe head and do this. If you haven't it's a bit more tricky but I wanted to show you that you can do it at home. If it seems like you're hitting it too hard then perhaps you need to take off some more wood. Um, there's a danger of it actually splitting the axe head if the wedge is too wide. So keep hitting it as it starts to go in. Just keep checking like the back of the axe here. If a split was going to happen, it would happen in line with the saw cut and it would start forming here. It's not a massive problem, to be honest. Um, once it's wedged, it's fine. You could just put some glue in there as well. Um, but this is how it looks like this but just be careful and you might need to read just a few more times there we go it's just started to go in you can see it parting the top of the handle so i'm just going to go in a little bit more naturally is sounding different like it's wanting to stop so I'm not going to go too much further than this like that so this is it here and um, because the wedge has been glued you can see it just shiny bit there that's been glued so I'm going to let that set 
and then what I'll do is I will just cut this off either with a knife or with a saw. To cut this wedge off the excess with the knife, thumb push and we're just going to keep scoring a little line along here. There we go, comes off easy like that. Look at that nice contrasting dark wood there. Um, I'm just going to take the knife over this now just to tidy it up a little bit, blend it in. There we go. So sometimes the charring can slightly change the shape of the pre-drilled hole and your bottle opener will not fit perfectly. So what we can do is we can just line it up, press it to leave an indentation of what we need to remove. And then we can just very gently, we can use the tip of our knife and we can just increase the size a little bit. So there we go. So what we've done is we have added a drop of super glue to each magnet hole. We've pushed the magnet in. And sometimes you need to use a hard thing just to force it in. Um, try and get it as flush as possible. And then we've put in the bottle opener into place. And we've just put the two screws in. If you have a Pro Kit, you will have a bit of flat wax cotton. And um, there's various different ways you could tie the handle. You can just glue one edge and wrap it around. Uh, but uh, a nice way is to make a little loop in the middle of the handle. Pin it in place for now. And then just start wrapping over that loop. Pins it in place. Just trying to keep it nice and tight. And once you've wrapped a bit, you can pull this tail through just to hide the loop a little bit, like that. Carry on wrapping around. Once you have wrapped your handle and you're left with a few centimeters um, if you put a sharpish edge tip to it and then we're just gonna tuck it in simply get a little screwdriver or something and just try and tuck it underneath a few of your wraps and then it looks quite tidy If you find this a bit too tricky, you can simply just put a bit of glue again uh, to hold it in place. And that's it. All done. Go and get a beer.